Master Owens. Your Majesty. Yes. At Warriors and Warlords, I appeared before you and asked you to uh, to give a writ to my apprentice, Thomas Bordeaux. He is here, and he has sat his vigil, and I ask that you now offer him elevation into the Order of Laurel. Come in the order. Their Majesties request the presence of their Order of the Laurel. Not kneeling on the gravel, please. <laughs> From, yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, please. <laughs> Masters and mistresses of the Laurel, is it, is it still your wish this day that Baron Thomas join your ranks? Oh, no. Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, then. It is Thomas's desire to honor the culture and traditions of North Shield, as well as those other kingdoms that he has lived in and loved. Accordingly, this ceremony's elements are drawn not only from the North Shield Book of Ceremonies, but from the ceremonies of Kaid and the West as well. In addition, there will be two speakers for each order of peerage, one from either the West or Kaid, and one from North Shield. The strength and stability of the kingdom lie in these, the virtues of its people, valor, art, and service. If any one of these are lacking, the kingdom fails. The artisans of the kingdom of North Shield Glorify it with their work, seeking always to be true to these words. Ducere, ministrare, illuminare, to guide, to serve, and to light the way. Master Owen has asked a boon on behalf of his apprentice, Thomas Bordeaux. We would hear your thoughts. Duchess Ginevra and then Queen Avalyn will speak for the royal peerage with regards to Thomas's nobility. Your Majesties, may I address your populace? Mm -hmm. Please. Now I'll try not to cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Greetings, Kingdom of North Shield. Hi. Hi. I am Duchess Ginevra de Ravenna, formerly of the West Kingdom and the Lady in Darkness. For half of my lifetime, it has been my pleasure to call Thomas my friend. From the first notes I heard him play, I was drawn into the magic of his music. Little did I know how deeply my life path would be altered in the conversations when he set down his guitar. In every way imaginable, he has influenced my world. He is challenging me to think and to strive, to excel, Ugh. and believe in the magic of me. <laughs> Thomas offered me as his pretty rock to my Mari and changed the course of my universe forever. His music is this part of the soundtrack of my life and his friendship a priceless gift. I am honored to have the opportunity to witness this celebration. The path to this period has been a long one for Thomas, a road not traveled alone, clearly. I believe he understands the expectations and obligations of being a Laurel and will bring his own vision to this peerage. Thomas will listen, consider, discuss, and then set to music the saga of those around him. Consider yourselves warned. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Your Majesties. I would like to thank Thomas for this opportunity to speak on his behalf. It is, um, I was very honored to be asked to speak as a royal peer. Um, 
Today I am speaking as a Lady of the Rose, and it is my responsibility to speak to Thomas's nobility. But I don't think I need to speak about that. <laughs> I really don't. I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's hearts here that Thomas has nobility, that he is noble, that he reaches out. He is a leader. He is a representative. And he is also something that is very near and dear to my heart. And he is an advocate. He has brought the Bardic community closer to the forefront. He has inspired many people in North Shield to, to not only become better musicians and better bards, but to try it out in the first place. <laughs> um, I, I, he, he makes sure to come to us and say, you know what, I think this would be great. I think this would be great for the Bardic community. And he is an advocate, and he is a leader, and he is my peer, as I believe he is yours as well. Sir Charles of Dublin, and then Prince Melrocky will speak for the Order of the Chivalry with regards to Thomas's honor. And it please your majesties, I will address the populace. His lordship, I was saying that for the last time, <laughs> Thomas Bordeaux happens to embody to me, nonetheless emphasized reasons why it's grand to be a laurel. Being a laurel makes you a bit higher profile in a kingdom. And in my case, that meant that I met Thomas months before I would have, even though my kingdom is small. And that's a blessing. His diverse compositions are sweet as to make grown men cry. His tributes to our queens and his barbed satiric compositions puncture the pompous and to help right wrongs within the wide world, make him a glorious addition to this period. Are not these qualities exactly what one hopes that a bard would embody? I've been given the honor to speak about Thomas and his largesse. The man shares his music with everybody. He's in passionate about it. I mean, I love sitting down and talking to him. I actually talked to him about how would you get somebody interested in doing Bart? And he's like, this is what I would do. And he gave me a plan on how you would get somebody into Bart. He has a spark and a joy for this. And that makes me proud to, one, know him, and also to hear him sing. It's fabulous. If you have not, you're missing out, find him, I'll sing to you. <laughs> I wholeheartedly say that he's my peer. Thank you, Your Majesty. They may, and then Maestra Isabella will speak for the Order of the Pelican. I am Maeve Renata, Mistress of the Laurel, or of the Pelican. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rising to greet your majesties and to speak on behalf of my friend, Thomas Bordeaux, um, who has shown most eloquently his heart and soul through his music, but I knew him first through his generosity. When I was new and unknown in the Kaid, he welcomed me to the barony of Gildenholt and to the community of performers, and to the lifelong friendship of the household of Lantern's Keep. All of these many years, he has never hesitated to take on responsibilities, both great and small, uh, be it leading a barony, advising royalty, uh, encouraging fellow artisans, or just transporting equipment so that others might shine. 
um, as a pelican, I recognize his service in giving his heart's blood to the dream, and I've always known he is a peer. Thank you. Your Majesties, may I address your populace? Please. People quite often hear that a person uses his power for either good or evil. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility, etc. Thomas Bordeaux would have you believe that he uses his powers ser of service for evil. <laughs> when I first met him, he convinced my young son that when he reached a certain age, Thomas would eat him. <laughs> Rather than admonish him for scaring my kid, I played along. <laughs> that moment was the start of a friendship and a realization that he would have you believe that his powers are for evil, but the reality is he uses his service powers for good. He has served multiple kingdoms for a very long time and what I admire most about Thomas is that he is willing to have the crucial conversations many of us shy away from. He understands that even in a wholly volunteer setting there are times where hard conversations must be had and he is willing to be the quote bad guy to help the organization as a whole. I have seen him use these powers in many different settings and I admire someone who does not shy away from the hard tasks a leader must face. Your Majesties, he is my peer, and I heartily commend him to you. Thank you. <coughs> Magnifico Nicolo will speak for the Order of Defense. Your Majesties. <laughs> I've known Thomas since he's moved to Nordskogen and I could speak to the skill and grace of his music, which the week before he was announced, I heard peers of Atlantia at a non-SA event on their own speak of him because his fame and his music had traveled that far. But instead I wish to speak of one of the pieces he has done that most impressed me, which was reaching out to arts that he is not a part of and is not familiar with to find out what exemplifies grace in that art so that he could then help promote those groups and understand their arts and provide word fame for them. And to me, that was the quintessential moment in which I felt he is my peer. And I'm very happy to commend him to you. Thank you. Lord Aeon and Domina Lucky will speak for the populace with regards to Thomas's quality as a peer. May I address your populace? Please do. I speak as a member of the populace who first met Thomas nearly 30 years ago when a slender young man with a full head of hair and a 12-string guitar <laughs> wandered into our camp and asked if we'd like to hear some songs. I didn't remember his name from that evening, but I remembered his song. And I tried in vain over the years to learn the name of the man whose music had moved me so. And then fate reunited us here in North Shield, and we renewed our old acquaintance. With this, I had the unique experience of seeing from my perspective a young artist transformed overnight into a master of his craft, recognized throughout the society for his talents and contributions. Yet, to my surprise, not yet a laurel. His music, I was told, was considered by some to not be period enough. The 12th century composer Hildegard Van Bingham wrote music considered by many to be centuries ahead of its time. <laughs> Musical theory is timeless. And while Thomas's melodies may not be green sleeves, what he does with his music is entirely period. <coughs> he inspires us with songs of love and duty. They encourage us to be gentle and forgiving <coughs> with ourselves because they've been there. They are there. They know that without struggle, there can be no growth. No symphony without several thousand rounds of hot cross buns. <laughs> no great solo without a liberal amount of time agonizing in the wings. What grace is mine to be able to bear witness that the, in the pursuit of coaxing beauty from, the, from thin air, 
Baron Thomas daily makes it possible and indeed bearable for other voices to rise and enrich this kingdom's harmony. Thank you. We are heartened to hear such amazing testaments on Thomas's behalf. However, there is one among you who has not yet spoken, Your Grace Mary. Your Majesties, I am Sir Mari Alexander, Lioness of the West. I am a companion of the Order of the Laurel, a companion of the Order of the Pelican. I bear the grant of the Red Wyvern. I am a Duchess of the West, and I have been graced with the good luck and fortune to have won the coronet of the Principality of Sanagua. I have traveled halfway around the world to bear witness today. You have asked these good worthies for testament on Thomas's behalf to judge here if your laurels are indeed correct in that Thomas is worthy to join their order. You have heard how he has taught. You have heard how his music has wound itself to the lives of all that Thomas touches. You have heard how he has grown himself, how he is a leader of men and women. <laughs> Thomas has been my boon companion for nigh upon 30 years. I would certainly set the laurel wreaths upon him, but it is not our decision, your majesties. This now, with these testaments in hand, lie upon you. What say you? Members of the order, including those from very far lands. <laughs> <laughs> we ask you to stay with us. We thank you for your counsel. Really? You have your leave to depart. Those who are not members. Those who are not members. Those who are not members. Oh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. We, we dismiss like three people. <laughs> All right. um, companions of the Order of the Laurel, we have heard from our peers and our populace. We are in agreement that Thomas Bordeaux is worthy of membership into your noble order. Will you guide him, teach him, and light his way as he takes up these new responsibilities? Aye. Aye. Let the candidate come forward. Conrad and Avalyn, second of their names, call Thomas Bordeaux to present himself before their thrones now. <laughs> Strings and offer my voice there. 
Thomas, the skills of your student make us mindful of why we do these things. Master Owen, we are minded to admit your apprentice, Thomas Bordeaux, to the Order of the Laurel. Will you release him from whatever fealty exists between you? Thomas, we have never stood in fealty, but to this day I have stood as a mentor and a teacher. But before that, I was your friend. Today, I am your friend. And I shall always be your friend and be there to learn and teach and share and promote these arts and this society that we love so much. And I, for my part, release you from those vows. And I return to you this symbol of the bond that was between us. <clears throat> and I say this, as I said to you before, this relationship could not be about a peerage. It could not be worth dealing with it was. And you're not done. <laughs> right mindful of your achievements and service to our realm, and responsive to the wishes of your peers, we are minded to create you a master of the laurel, knowing that to be a peer is to hold a sacred trust and that the obligations of this rank will demand of you efforts every moment of your life. <clears throat> will you accept from us the honor and badge of your achievements? Will you, to the best of your ability, continue your quest for artistic excellence as you most surely have until now and seek to increase your labor and talents as beliefs of a nobleman and train any of your dependents that you may have to do likewise far as it is within your power? I will. Well, to you, the to the best of your ability, guide those who come to you for guidance. I will. Will you, to the best of your ability, teach all who come to you to learn? I will. Will you, to the best of your ability, light the way for these, our populace of North Shield? I will. Will you pledge to continue to uphold the honor of this order? I will. <clears throat> then let all and sundry hear our wish in full. On this day in our shire of Rivenwood Tower, let all know that His Lordship Thomas Bordeaux shall be known henceforth as Master, Master of our Order of the Laurel, done by our hands and our wills this day, Conrad, and Avalon, second of those wonderful names in our stellar kingdom of North Shield. Is there a medallion? Aye, there is. <clears throat> this is the legacy medallion of North Shield. This legacy has been passed down from 45 people. It starts with Master Danner and it ends now with you. Please know that there is a strong and healthy foundation for which that you can lean upon whenever you need it. Is there a Nordskogen legacy medallion? Yes, Your Majesty, there is. There is a long, rich legacy of the North Nordskogen medallion starting at Ruth of the Far North back in 1977 and ending today here with you. Master Owen, you would present a gift. Yes. This is a medallion for yourself. Thank you so much. 
it has long been recognized that there are those among us who are much deserving of high honor, but who, by reason of the nature and direction of their services and achievement, come not to the glory of warrior or throne, yet without whom our kingdom would not be half so blessed. Therefore was created the Order of the Laurel, to recognize those who, possessing all the other skills and virtues and attributes appropriate to members of the peerage, shall also have distinguished themselves by outstanding achievements in the arts and the sciences. And the symbol of this order is a medallion bearing a laurel wreath. For the chaplet of laurel has long been acknowledged as a mark of superior achievement. And this order ranks in precedence with the order of chivalry, the order of the pelican, and the order of defense, and carries with it a patent of arms. Now take from our hands this, the symbol of your order, the laurel wreath, which has ever stood for excellence, as we have acknowledged your excellence this day. Do you wish to swear fealty at this time? I do. Um, I would have my sword. Oh, Master Owens. Yes. Is Thomas, in, in the spirit of this order, and in the spirit of the Bardic Arts, has asked that he may swear fealty on an instrument appropriate to his discipline. This being a right and just thing, we will it so. This harp was crafted by an artisan who was one of the founders of Schattentor, then played by Emmerich Aden of Eldermere, and then it came to me, and this day it passes to you. The duties of a bard are as the strings on a harp. Observe for the story is before you. Listen for the silence and the stirring. Learn, laugh for the fact that we are here. Love for this is why we are here. Live, remember for all those who were before. Reflect for the truth lies in between. Recount for all those who yet will hear. Rehearse for joy in the art. Relate, for a harp has many strings, play. It is time for your oath, yes. Thomas. I hereby swear by mouth and hand, feel in service to the kingdom and crown of Norshire. To come and go. to go, to strike and despair, to do and to let be, by the lawful command of the crown. To guide all who seek my talents and abilities, to diligently serve wherever needed. To light the way for these our people, in need or in plenty, in peace or in war, in living or in dying, from this hour henceforth to the crown of our death row, or death take me, or the world have. This do we hear and not and and store fail to remember and will rely on you to advise us wisely. And we for our part, do swear fealty to you, and as you light the way for North Shield with honor and charity, we will act towards you respectively in all things, protecting you with our aid and defending you with our household. Protecting you and defending you um, with, our, with our power until we depart our throne or death take us or the world end. So do I, I say Conrad, King of North Shield. And I, Queen Evelyn of North Shield. Rise, Thomas Bordeaux, Master of the Laurel. Thank you. Please complete your order. <laughs> For Master Thomas Bordeaux, newest member of the Order of the Laurel. Vivat! Vivat!